Last week, virtually every media outlet from around the world reported on the newly discovered void inside the Great Pyramid of Giza, a massive chamber discovered through particle physics and muon technology, approximately 100 feet or 30 meters in length and about 26 feet high. But in this video, I'm going to discuss something a bit different, which is the completely unusual reaction from the two most leading authorities on Egyptology and archaeology. Take, for example, Mark Lehner and Zahi Hawass. Well, let's start with Mark Lehner, who said two things that completely contradicted the press briefing on behalf of Scan Pyramids. He stated that one, this void is an incline, so it's likely to not have any type of burial or any type of artifacts inside of it. And he also theorized that it was likely to be a structural support necessary to keep weight off the Grand Gallery. But wait a second, this completely contradicts what the president and co-founder of Heritage Innovation Preservation Institute, which of course oversees the Scan Pyramids project, his name is Mehdi Tayubi, and he specifically states that they have no idea if this void is horizontal or inclined. And also, the engineers overseeing this project have completely ruled out the possibility that this void has any type of purpose involving the structural integrity of the pyramid itself. So here you have Mark Lehner doing interviews with the BBC, the New York Times, and other media outlets from around the world. But did he even read or watch the press briefing? Did he even look at any of the information? He immediately starts doing interviews and contradicts the actual facts that were presented in this find? I mean, where is his due diligence? Mark Lehner is the director of Ancient Egypt Research Association, and his works are cited in virtually every textbook on the subject of the pyramids and the sphinx around the world. And then you have Zahi Hawass, the former Minister of Antiquities for Egypt, who was of course fired for a variety of reasons, and then just a few years later was implicated in a massive theft of ancient relics from pyramids and got off the hook because of his connections and inside corruption. This is the same guy who has completely refused to acknowledge or even discuss the water erosion around the enclosure of the Sphinx. He's also refused to discuss the site of Gobekli Tepe, and he had some really unusual reactions to this newly discovered void in the Great Pyramid. Quote, This paper offers nothing to Egyptology. Zero. He even referred to the individuals involved as propagandists and saying that they were wrong to call their findings a new discovery. And this is where things get a bit more interesting. Because he goes on to state that Egyptologists and archaeologists have known for years about the existence of several spaces inside the Great Pyramid. And Mark Lehner said something similar, where he told the New York Times that the Great Pyramid is like Swiss cheese rather than cheddar, and saying that this void is most likely no big deal. Wait a second. So a void that has remarkable similarities to that of the Grand Gallery is no big deal? But what's with this analogy of Swiss cheese and these many other voids that they've known about? I mean, can you show me some publications that mention all these voids? I only know of one other one which was discovered two years ago through Scan Pyramids, and you can see it here mentioned in the same discovery as this massive void, same company, same organization. And two years ago, down to almost the day, they still haven't drilled into it, and by they, the Egyptian authorities. I mean, how long does it take to drill a hole to make the decision to do so? And they're just sitting on this? They've known that there's been a void in the Great Pyramid for more than two years, and they've done nothing about it. Don't you find that interesting? The reason why you should find that interesting is because there's already examples of a cover-up where the Egyptian authorities, including Zahi Uwas, have done research inside the Great Pyramid of Giza without the public's knowledge and lied about it. Take, for example, the 1993 versus the 2002 research of this small tunnel shaft inside the Great Pyramid where after the Egyptian authorities and Zahi Awas had said that no one had been in there ever since, when they revisited the site nine years later, the two handles were broken and missing, and clearly there's some, they had gone in there. Let's just be honest. They did their own research, and they found some reason to lie about it. What's that about? But let me keep going, because the evidence actually gets more disturbing. Why would Mark Lehner and Zahi Awas be so dismissive of this new find? Well, you may not be aware, but four days prior to the November 2nd press release of the newly discovered void, Mark Lehner and Zahi Was released their new book that they co-wrote together titled The Definitive History, Giza and the Pyramids, and that was released on October 29th. And when you consider the obvious fact that Mark Lehner had no idea of the information that was presented at press release prior, he was obviously left out of the loop, and same with Zahi Was, who condemned these people as propagandists and said that he should be more involved. Maybe, just maybe, their book doesn't contain any of the information about all these voids, this 
cheddar, this Swiss cheese analogy. I haven't read the book, but can anyone answer and leave a comment whether they mention anything about these multiple voids or if they just mentioned that one, which of course was covered from two years ago? What about the rest? Because this seems to be new to me. I mean, did I miss the memo? Was this mentioned in some textbook about all these other voids? I mean, it doesn't seem like the public or there's any information or can someone provide a publication from anything written from Zahi Was or Mark Lehner, including this book or anywhere else? Hmm. Now, if you think I'm reaching on the suppression and cover-up of information and knowledge from the masses on behalf of these mainstream Egyptologists and archaeologists, well, take just one example of that of the Great Sphinx. And I made a video on this. The link will be at the end of the video, of course. But Mark Lehner was the first to excavate the tunnels underneath the Sphinx, and this was in the 70s. And then he and Zahi Was had denied the existence of these tunnels for decades until Zahi Was eventually admitted it and said, well, these don't go anywhere. There's nothing down there. And as you can see here, they never even show you one picture, not one video exists at all of these hidden chambers and tunnels that do indeed exist under the Sphinx. I mean, to change your stories and deny it and not to have one picture or video in existence of these tunnels? Guys, connect the dots on this. But it gets even worse. Mark Lehner, even though he himself, and you can see in videos, and I have a video on this too, the link will be at the end, where every single example of how the ancient Egyptians, or at least the theories of how they cut and carved stone, has been ultimately debunked. And this all ties back into the theories that the Great Pyramid of Giza was built prior to the cataclysm of 12,000 years ago. But the information is there that strongly suggests that the Great Pyramid of Giza was something far more advanced, sophisticated, and technologically based. And the authorities that oversee these sites know about it. And it's time that we start asking new questions and that they hurry up this stupid process and drill the damn holes into these chambers to see what is in there. Drill a three millimeter or one inch hole. They've already discussed doing it because where it stands right now, they say they want to spend the next couple of years having archaeologists and Egyptologists from around the world consider and debate and discuss what this void might be. Shut up! Drill the freaking hole, stick a camera in there, and find out. But when you look at what happened between 1993 and 2002, well, something just tells me that the authorities that do run the show want to see first. So it makes you wonder what's really going on there. But I'll close up there. I'm Jimmy. This is Bright Insight. Like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. And as you can see, I got a new place. I got a new, I moved. This is a new studio. I'll have to make a video about that. So this will all be changing as I make upgrades as we go. But anyways, I'll close up there. Check out the videos that are linked here and take care, everybody.